You're listening to The World at Eight with Lynn Mozart. <laughs> Nationalist News. Highlights of the news today, Wednesday, the 5th of September. Sectarian divisions in Northern Ireland still run deep. Office of Fair Trading to spend six weeks reviewing petrol prices. Direct line to close 900 jobs to save costs. A real Wally, thank God for football. Christians in landmark case in the European Court of Human Rights. Bulgaria has a rethink on joining the Eurozone. Impose a six-day week, Troika tells Greece. Thought for the day, genetic madness or ignorance? And finally, a zombie for president? UK News. Sectarian divisions still run deep in North Belfast, as the last three nights of rioting have shown. A number of missiles and fireworks were hurled at police on Tuesday evening. Around 200 people gathered around Denmark Street and the police were moved in at 2200 hours. The dispute is still centred around a Republican parade, and the marching issue is still a large thorn in the side of the peace process. Northern Ireland's First and Deputy First Ministers Peter Robinson and Martin McGuinness are expected to meet the North Belfast Assembly members and the local DUP MP at Nigel Dodds on Wednesday afternoon in a first step to seek solutions to this problem within this area. <clears throat> the Office of Fair Trading is to review petrol prices at the pump. OFT will have to take into consideration the disparity between the falling costs of crude oil and the rising costs of the petrol stations. Prices at the pumps went up by 38% from June 2007 to June 2012, and diesel 43% over the same time period. The OFT have stated that the retail roads fuel sector was estimated to be worth around £32 billion. The report will be published in January of next year. The insurance company, Direct Line, will shed 900 jobs to save costs. Direct Line, which is being demerged by parent company Royal Bank of Scotland, has launched a target of £100 million worth of gross annual savings costs by the end of 2014. This includes closing a site in Stockton-on-Tees, which will cost 500 jobs. RBS is state-owned and has been ordered by the European regulators to sell Direct Line as a condition of securing a bailout from the UK government and the company will probably be floated by RBS in an initial public offering, IPO, later this year. Direct Line, who owns Green Flag Brands and Churchill, employs around 15,000 staff in total. Who is the dumb one? Footballer Patrick Vieira received a six-month driving ban and a £1,000 fine for speeding near Stockport, Cheshire. His lawyers claim his mail went astray and Vieira never received the prosecution notice at his home. The punishments have been suspended, waiting his appeal. Vieira is reported to have said, I was quite scared when I saw it was a final notice. I didn't know what was going on. Working for Manchester City, we have a department which, if we have any problems, they deal with that situation. I'm not used to dealing with these situations, so I took it to the department because I know when a letter says something is a final notice, it is serious. A World Date reporter commented, It is a good job this guy is not in charge of something crucial, but just kicking a ball round a field. If he had a brain cell, he would be dangerous. Euro News Four Christians this week took their cases to the European Court of Human Rights in Strasbourg, claiming workplace discrimination, that a former Archbishop of Canterbury says has turned them into victims of a new secular orthodoxy. The four, or Britons who claim national laws fail to protect them, argue that their employers contravened European human rights legislation that bans religious discrimination and allows freedom of thought, conscience and religion. The National Secular Society said before the court hearing that British courts had been right to reject the four complaints and that the rights of gay people are placed at risk if it is decided that reasonable accommodation is acceptable when religious people provide, or refuse to provide, services to them. A World Date reporter commented, it seems the rights of gay people are overtaking those of normal people, and that if of the gay persuasion one can play the gay card, which is equivalent to the race card, it is despicable. Bulgaria has halted plans to join the euro in the latest public setback for the beleaguered currency union. Speaking in an interview with the Wall Street Journal on Monday, 3rd of September, in Sofia, 
Prime Minister Boyko Borisov and Finance Minister Simeon Jankov said the decision was the result of a debt crisis and the double-debt recession facing the Eurozone, along with rising public opposition to joining the single currency. Right now, I don't see any benefits of entering the Eurozone, only costs, Jankov said, adding that disagreement between countries on how best to respond to the debt crisis made the prospect of Euro membership too risky for us and it's also not certain what the rules are and what they are likely to be in a year or two. Greece should impose a six-day week to secure the next tranche of its bailout package, according to a leaked letter sent by the country's creditors. Under a heading, Increased Flexibility of Work Schedules, the Troika, which is composed of officials from the European Commission, European Central Bank, ECB, and the International Monetary Fund, IMF, states that the country should increase the number of maximum working days to six days across all sectors. It adds that the government should also reduce daily rest between shifts to the 11 hours minimum and scrap restrictions on length of shifts. World News Egypt, Turkey and Saudi want Iran to join in the ousting of President Assad of Syria. Whilst the UN slams arms suppliers to both sides of the Syrian conflict, Egypt is working to form a coalition of Muslim states to convince Syria's Assad to stand aside. Egyptian President Mirzi said the time had come for Syria to change and not wasting time speaking of reform. This time has passed now. Now it is time for change. Assad must learn from recent history and step down before it is too late. A World Date writer has commented, The lessons of the ever-failing so-called Arab League are legendary. They should look after their own democracies and leave Assad to his problems, which have been increased thousandfold by both the UN, the West and these Muslim fundamentalist countries. Leave Assad alone. He is the only Muslim leader who is not under the green Islamic thumb, and long may he remain so. Thought for the day. Genetic madness or a clever ploy? What happens when people get too educated? I mean, what happens to the world in general when some people really reach the highest level of education and knowledge? Is it like the Tower of Babel and we incur God's wrath for overreaching ourselves or for altering the course of natural life? I am a great believer, and I mean I believe in a natural order, a structure to nature and man, and although I may be a right-wing Luddite, I believe in a higher order from whence all things come, despite science not because of it. Science is for man. Believing is individual and personal. Now, there is a research geneticist from Imperial College London, oh, we do get them, don't we, called Arati Prasad, and she has written about not the joy of sex, but the joy of no sex. Despite the fact that 99.9% .9 of all higher animal species reproduce themselves with a partner or two, OK, he might be eaten alive after intercourse, as with some species of insects, but generally he survives to have sex another day. However, Prasad writes about the very, very few species who do it all alone. Some could say, I do it my way. <laughs> yeah. Namely, whiptail lizards and some hammerhead sharks. But wait for it, Prasad has suggested that this is the way to go for humans in the future. Now, this is money and education gone mad in my book. She is an attractive young woman, judging by the fly cover of her book, Like a Virgin. So what is the deal? Well, first she gets publicity and some sort of fame, and secondly, some idiots might well jump on her bandwagon, and I do not mean Madonna. To sum it up in layman's terms, she thinks that men could well carry children in a false womb and give birth. The Y chromosome, which is the male chromosome, is, according to her, dying out, and we will all be extinct unless we have virgin births, yada, yada, yada. <clears throat> She has highlighted the very rare cases of ovarian teratomas, which grow from egg cells. Now, I can speak an authority here, because in 1981 I had an operation to remove my twin from one of my ovaries. I do not know about other cases, as mine was very rare, but I was told that my mother had been expecting twins, and I absorbed my brother at some time in her womb. I had already had three children by the time this was found during a routine operation, and it was a terrible shock to the surgeon, myself, and my mother. Algernon, as I called him, was male, had teeth and hair, and is, I believe, now in Great Ormond Street Hospital in a jar. Now, this teratoma was in no way viable, having been dead for 36-odd years, 
But imagine the awful research needed on cells, fetuses, animals and humans to obtain a viable result. It beggars belief. It would be a great money spinner, though, for the madmen of science that would no doubt receive huge donations from people who would like to produce their own child. Over-the-hill females, gay couples, both male and female, and practically every pervert on the planet would jump at that opportunity. Fancy reproducing your own little person without any help, a sort of mini-me. The thought makes me vomit. Another factor is that we as a world are suffering from overpopulation, and many are starving as it is. Prasad should go back to India and see what the majority of her fellow Indians are surviving on. Parts of Africa are inundated with mothers who produce umpteen children, most of which are destined to die, whether from AIDS or hunger. China is growing by the million every year and are limiting their output supposedly, but they are still considering taking over vast swathes of Africa for their poor to exploit. Prasad should know that when it comes to the Muslim population, they do not need any help at all, just another country's land and money. Somehow, the future, as portrayed in this book and the redesigning of humanity, is not a pleasant one. It denigrates the male species even more, and we women have had enough to do without producing and raising children, without the odd spate of pleasurable sexual activity. Give the average British man a chance to become pregnant with a test tube oddity in a plastic container in his belly, and I'm sure he would jump at the chance. No, I think he would run a mile, frankly, as indeed I would if given the chance. It is all very well to waste money on research that could work, but this never will. I'm not denying the world needs sorting out and the people within it, but this is not the way forward. Looking at it from a humorous and political point of view, you could have leaders of certain political parties producing their own members and supporters. Make way for conservative baby number 1105. The nationalist Damien 666 would be a winner too, but I do not see Nick going for that sort of nonsense. In truth and humour aside, this book should be shelved and all the nonsense consigned to the fires. It is not a revolutionary idea that would transform our lives, feed our people or give us something the world needs. It is frippery and divisive and takes our minds off the things that count. Our country, our people and the welfare of both. The world can do without this particular message. After all, no sex we're British works for me. And finally, a zombie is making a bid for the world's first zombie presidential candidate. Morgan Zombie and his wife, Patty Morgan Zombie, were being hosted by the Democratic National Convention. They are apparently highlighting the plight of the zombie community. Mr. Zombie and his wife, who is not a zombie, are part of a promotional stunt by the American network AMC to get their post oh, I can't say this. To get their post apocalyptic to get their post apocalyptic TV series The Walking Dead on a Dish network that dropped them after a contract dispute. Mrs. Zombie was reported as stating, My husband is running for president because he could have taken a certain issue lying down. Well, because he was already lying down, but he decided to stand up and pledge to fight for equal viewing opportunities for all. Oh God, at least he's a democratic candidate. He should do well there, as he's the same hue as Obama. You have been listening to The World Date. I am Lynn Mozart, and I wish you all a very good night.